Hello, it's Gabby here for you. And in this week's podcast from Confidence After Cancer, I'm going to be thinking about friendships, particularly about friendship breakups, which unfortunately is something that I know a lot of people are struggling with. First of all, though, I'd like to say thank you so much for listening to my podcast. It really means a lot to me. And if there's any topics that you'd like me to cover, please get in touch with me, ping me a message. I'd love to hear from you. Friendships and friendship breakups after cancer diagnosis are, are really, really important and something that some people have reached out to me because they're struggling. My experience was after my diagnosis, I was very lucky that I had friends and family and workmates who showed me just so much kindness, so much compassion and generosity. It can be, you know, just a chat or it can be just a thoughtful gesture. People can be so, so kind and so understanding. And it can be really an important part of your cancer journey, uh, how you go through your treatment, how you recover afterwards. A lot can depend on the support that you've got around you and whether you've got that support network. And if you're listening to this, I hope you do have that support network because I was very lucky to have that and I really, really appreciate it. What has changed, though, since um, I've stopped my treatment and life after treatment, as we know, can be sometimes a bit of a roller coaster. A time for evaluation, a time of reflecting on where are you going in your life. And for me as well, it brought into sharp contrast the fact that for many years, as a lot of us do, you think you've got plenty of time. You think you've got time to do everything you always wanted to do. And when you've got that cancer diagnosis, you really, really realise life is really short. Life is short and I know we can't spend every day being blissfully happy doing exactly what we want to do. But it does make you stop and think about the people that you're spending time with. Do they enrich your life? Do they add to it? And I'm hoping that you've got people around you who make you feel like that. I really do. And me and my husband have got a wide circle of friends and a lot of it's come from different things, different interests that we've got. Some of the, you know, the music that we follow, some of the holidays that we've been on really lucky to have met some really funny um quirky people that've got a very different outlook on life to us and that's um really enriching sometimes to to meet people like that who've got different points of view however over the last couple of years i think we've become more conscious and more aware of some of the people that you you meet occasionally you meet socially and you think oh they're funny or they're a good laugh And then you realise, particularly on social media, particularly on Facebook, where a lot of us hang out, some of the behaviours cross a line sometimes that doesn't feel ethical to us, doesn't feel nice, doesn't feel like people that we really want to be associated with. So I can give you an example of that. Some people you might not realise at the time when you meet them, actually, when you get talking to them about stuff, um, they find out they're quite racist and that for me is a definite no-no. That's a definite, I don't need that in my life. And that's not somebody that I, I, I need to associate with. And it cracks me up. It's, it's ironic in a way. You hear this, this saying, oh, I'm not racist, but... Or, no, he can't be racist. He's got black friends. I'm not even going to go into that now because judge, I'm just giving you an example of something where somebody crosses a line for me. If I know that they're racist, they're using racist language or they're sympathising with somebody who's being really racist and offensive. Not for me. I don't need that in my life. I've got enough people, thank you, that I can spend time with who are not um, going to use that language and, and use that behaviour. The other thing that I've seen quite often that again for me crossed the line was online bullying personal attacks on people who have different points of view you know me and my husband we're we're quite into our politics we've got a strong sense of what we think social injustice is but that doesn't mean that we think we're always right and other people are always wrong and I've seen some people being called out for being stupid or you're wrong and I'm going to tell you why you're wrong and I'm going to tell you why I'm right and you're wrong and going and I'm going to almost batter you into submission some really horrible lang- nasty bullying language and when I see people acting like that and sometimes you, you can be a bit compassionate and think oh wow they must be really hurting to be talking like that they you know what must their life like be like for them to be so angry and to be so nasty and to be so bitter and again if it's a close friend it might be somebody that you just want to have a quiet word with and take to on side and say oh interesting that maybe i you know didn't come across well 
think that was quite out of order what you said then. And I would say that to a close friend if they, you know, had an out of character really outburst. I'd want to unpack that. I'd want to understand what was going on for them, for them to act in that way that was out of character. But then I've realised for some people that is their character. They like to be nasty. They like to take what they think is the higher moral ground. So again, for me, I'm just giving an example of what I think is crossing a line of unacceptable behaviour. But of course, we all are individuals. We all have our own values. What I might find offensive, somebody else might class as banter or humorous and again you know there's a lot on on social media about being woke and oh you can't say anything these days well actually you can say anything you can say anything you like to anybody that you like but just don't be offensive and if somebody finds it offensive then you can ask yourself are they somebody that you really want to be around or actually have you have you crossed the line in your language and behavior Me and Paul, my husband, we are very passionate about politics, but it's not something that I would really fall out with somebody over. I'd like to think that somebody could have a different um, opinion to me or vote for a different political party and we could have a a grown-up conversation about that. We wouldn't have to be nasty, but we do both believe that um, our, our philosophy is if you've got more than you need, then you build a bigger table, not a fence to keep people out. You know, I've got a really good example of that. Uh, I live in Trafford, which is um, a borough in Manchester, which is quite an affluent borough in some parts. And I found this out um, a few years ago that if you live in North Manchester, in one of the areas called Old Trafford, for instance, compare and contrast that to somebody who lives in South Trafford, which is like, I don't know, 10 miles down the road, maybe not even that, where we've got Bowdoin and Hale and Altrincham and really leafy affluent areas where some very rich people live the life expectancy if you live in south manchester is 10 years more than if you were born through no fault of your own into a poor family in north trafford and i find that quite unsettling and the fact that i don't really accept that that should be true for people an innocent child born into a family in old trafford should not think that their life expectancy and their health care and their education should be anything worse than somebody who's born 10 miles away and that's just my opinion and for what it's worth that is something I feel quite passionate about and so you know I don't need to rub people's noses in that I don't need to beat them into submission to agree with me on that that's my personal view other people might have different views and I could choose to support that by the way that I act by um, charities that I support by work that I do that don't have to always shout about but that's something my personal values that are very important to me so thinking about friendships and again I I used the phrase the other day echo chamber and somebody asked me what it meant and I was thinking about you know if you block and cut out of your life people who don't think in exactly the same way you run the risk of everybody around you or everything that you're reading being an echo chamber it's just playing back to you your points of view and is that a good thing or is that a bad thing well there's there's pluses and minuses for that the world isn't black and white the world isn't everybody thinking the way that you think but you know again life is very short do you really want to be constantly arguing with people and so I found, you know, some of the people that I've worked with that have struggled after cancer treatment has ended have been absolutely heartbroken sometimes because they've had what they considered a really good friendship that has broke down for various reasons. Um, I've heard this phrase a lot recently and some people just get ghosted. They just get ignored by people that they thought were good friends. And ghosting is something that's, like I said, the expression is quite new to me and I've heard it. Uh, relating to dating and thank god i'm not in my 20s anymore and i'm not out there trying to um, meet somebody online which apparently is the only way you can meet somebody now for uh, meeting a life partner and i've heard some beautiful young women who have met somebody maybe met a a young man been out a few times and then the, the man has just completely ghosted them ignored them won't return their messages won't return their phone calls what is that all about but again, I've, I've heard of friendships where people have been ghosted, they've been completely ignored, cut out of people's lives, and it's really distressing. And so if that's happened to you, or if you've had a fallout with somebody, if you've had a really bad argument, my question would be, first of all, 
is the friendship worth saving? You've got to ask yourself that, you know, all relationships, all friendships are give and take. But sometimes you get in relationships, some people like to give or take more than the other party. If that's happened to you, use this little bit of time to reflect on that and think, well, maybe, you know, as we get older, we all change. Maybe our values have changed. Maybe our ethics have changed. As I said to you, my line now of unacceptable behaviour has become it's become a thicker line, if you like. It's become more obvious to me what is acceptable and what's not acceptable. And I really am conscious of the fact that life is far too short to be arguing with people constantly. If I had a good friend, I would be considering, is it time to let this go? Or can you agree to disagree? You know, you don't have to see eye to eye on everything, do you, to get on with somebody? And particularly sometimes when it's somebody in your family that you've got to be around, that maybe you don't have any choice you can maybe choose the amount of time you spend around that person. The most important thing, I think, and I gave this advice to somebody who was dealing with a really difficult family situation is, well, think about the regrets that you might have when this person's not in your life anymore. What Have you got regrets? Do you want to have regrets? Or do you want to think, well, actually, no, I'm happy in the decision that I've made. I can put this right by saying what I think without being nasty, without being personal, without being a personal attack and then move on because as I've taught before, the most important relationship you're ever going to have, the most important friendship you're going to ever have is with yourself and the person that you look at in the mirror and if you can look at that person with honesty and with pride and think well yeah I know what I'm about, I know what my ethics are I know what my values are. I never would deliberately hurt somebody because that's not the person that I am. Once you know your values and your ethics, then that makes everything else, makes dealing with other people who can be unpredictable, can be wonderful and can be quite bloody awful sometimes. Once you've got that relationship right with yourself, other relationships become easier because you can feel comfortable in the boundaries that you're setting. You're not setting them, hopefully, Um, to be difficult to be pig-headed you're doing them because they are the boundaries that fit with what you believe in and what you believe in is really important and don't let anybody else ever tell you otherwise i hope that's helpful for you if you are struggling with some friendships maybe you feel friends have let you down since diagnosis and i'm really sorry but that's all too common get in touch with me if you want to talk about it i'm always here for you Everybody's different. Everybody's journey is different. But I've got a lot of experience of this now. I've heard a lot of stories, some sad, some uplifting. But I can share with you some compassion and a listening ear. And I'm always here for you. So as always, thank you so much for listening. It means a lot to me. And if there's anything I can help you with, get in touch. You know where I am. Have a wonderful week. Stay safe. Stay sane. Thanks for listening. Bye bye. (music) 